Sensor were scanned to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons are advanced. It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You wish to hear energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. Watch how I saw it. Now, it's gone completely. Engage. Hello, and welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. I am your host, David, and joining me tonight, we have Hawk. Uh, good evening, all. And Donovan. Greetings, Earthlings. Uh, this week, we will be talking about what constitutes a sci-fi, and the mo- later on, the movie Interstellar, since Hawk has finally got around to watching the damn thing. <laughs> so, um, Oi! <laughs> Yeah, you're doing better than Donovan, he hasn't seen it at all. He didn't even know what it was. <laughs> so, anyway, the first subject is, what constitutes a sci-fi? How would you define something as sci-fi? And what sort of shows would fit into that definition that you wouldn't normally sort of think of as sci-fi? Um, so, first... Hawk, how? Uh, actually, no, Donovan. Mm. If you had to define what a sci-fi series is, what would you define it as? I'd, I'd look at it at how much sci-fi stuff is in it. Like, how much do they use technology in the show, and all that kind of jazz. Yeah. So, like, like with Pokemon or something, like it, it's. It's got a lot of it in there, but it's also not at the same time. Like it's yeah. balanced out by the whole. That, that's uh, one of the shows we're stuff. gonna. That's one of the shows we're gonna get to in a minute. Mm. Yeah. Um. But uh, I look at it. Sci-fi is at the very core. Science fiction is imagining a future or technological advance that's um, something that we could potentially achieve. Or something that's beyond what we can achieve. So, like, in Star Trek, the, the, the key premise of Star Trek is space travel. That's something mm. we can do, but it's got FTL travel, which is the warp drive. Um, the... In... A, uh, how do I put it? When we when I defined the, the rules for the sci-fi contests for the voting in the tournaments, it was effectively anything that has advanced computers, robots, aliens, space that sort of stuff it's effectively like it's it's a form of fiction where you take something scientific and you sort of go what happens if i dial this to 11 and go from there that's generally how i look at it what about you hawk how would you sort of go about defining sci-fi i'm fairly close to you with that one dave um as to my exact definition it would be something based in science that we don't currently have yet might be feasibly achievable some point in the future yeah that's that's all also just just on the same thing completely impossibly unfeasible yet entertaining that too so that's what i call sci-fi yeah yeah that's definitely a good way of looking at it um i'll let any viewers comment to us what you think just tweet to at spino breaker if you can work out how to spell it you can tweet me <laughs> it's s-p-i-n-o-b-r-e-a-k-e-r um tweet me what you guys think of the following if you think it's sci-fi or not okay first we have dragon ball z is it sci-fi It definitely has sci-fi elements in it. But then it also has, like, supernatural stuff in it, too. Yeah, see, that's sort of... For me, sci-fi and science fiction and fantasy are two sides of the same coin. One side uses advanced technology... Advanced technology to explain the mumbo-jumbo. So much so that my brain goes... When trying to explain it. 
the other side uses magic to explain it. So, same sort of thing. It's sort of like when you look at the Avengers, Thor's hammer. In the comics, it's effectively magic. But the way Can they I... explain it in the movies is it's to them, to us, we call it magic. To them, they call it science. And to me, that's sort of another way of looking at it. That's just an application of Clark's Law, where anything considered magic could just be a form of science that we don't yet understand. Exactly. Exactly. So. This is also explained in Star Trek. I mean, in Stargate, rather. Yeah. Well, look at Dragon Ball Z. In the later series of Dragon Ball Z, they found out what the key energy was, scientifically. Because in Gohan's lesson in high school, they were talking about it. This new form of organic energy that had only just been discovered. Um, so it almost became very sciencey at that point and lost a bit of the magic. Yes, they got the dra magic Dragon Balls, which can grant any wish because magic. But who knows? They could also be an advanced technology being created by an alien. Admittedly, created by an alien through magic, but eh. So ruling Dragon Ball Z, sci-fi or not sci-fi? Hawk. Sci-fi to an extent. So it, soft. It meets my it meets my definition in that it's completely unfeasible yet entertaining, and also has some sort of grounding with the uh, space flight and the hover vehicles float, flying around to be possible in the future. Okay, I'll open the definition up a little bit. Hard sci-fi, two thousand and one, a space odyssey. Soft sci-fi. Something like Eureka or Paul. Something that is sci-fi, but it's not super hardcore like 2001 A Space Odyssey. So we'll, we'll give it a sort of a, a grading scale along those lines. So what end of that spectrum, if it fits on the spectrum, would you sit Dragon Ball Z? Soft, very soft. If I had, to put, if I had to put something from the Dragon Ball universe in the more heaviest sci-fi, it would be GT because it was more space oriented than Z. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we, we just pretend that GT doesn't exist. Yeah. It exists, no one just wants to talk about it, so... <laughs> I don't give a flying crap. I'm a complete fanboy. Trust me, I don't care. Okay, Donovan, where would you sit Dragon Ball Z? Or just Dragon Ball in general? Um, I wouldn't... I wouldn't put it in sci-fi, to be honest. Like, it, it's a, it never originally was meant to be sci-fi like yeah. it just had that those little bits of sci-fi elements with Bulma and technology and stuff yeah. but it was more martial arts focused yeah it was so. but, it, but it, also, it also sort of fits the generalised concept of sci-fi though you've got aliens mm -hmm. you've got yeah. space travel you've got more aliens the only real element that isn't necessarily sci-fi in it like this is why we have sort of having a discussion this Dragon Ball Z sci-fi or not was the thing that sort of got me thinking about this um, is the magic side of things in it which is like the, the Dragon Balls granting any wish sort of thing mm. but that could be something as simple as matter replication technology yeah um, well I'd say the the original Dragon Ball definitely not yeah but the that's definitely Z heavily in, he in the soft side of sci-fi yeah yeah I'd, I'd definitely grant Dragon Ball Z soft sci-fi. I wouldn't grant Dragon Ball Z hard sci-fi. Mm. Okay, how about Pokemon? Hmm. Yeah, I'd put where, that in the... where would we rate Pokemon? Is it on the scale, off the scale? And if it's on the scale, where does it sit? I'll start with you, Donovan. Um, I'd put it in the middle-ish, because it, like, it does have all those genetic stuff in it, like how, you know... Pokemon are Mewtwo. Genetic Mewtwo is the clone of Mew, sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then you've got also the Pokeballs, where Pokemon are somehow yeah, magically the turned into the, matter, and then the put time, into a Pokeball. The Time Lord technology is bigger on the inside. Yeah. Even though they're when they go in, they're like little lights of energy and stuff. Yeah. Uses me. Um, I guess like in between the middle of sci-fi and in between hard sci-fi, I guess. Yeah, it's definitely cool. I would definitely put it higher up the scale than Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, but I wouldn't put it too much higher up the scale of Dragon Ball Z. Hmm. Uh, 
Um, what about you, Hawk? Where would you rate it? Honestly, I wouldn't rate it as sci-fi. It's entertaining as hell, but to me, it's more of an alternate. It's just more of a sort of fantasy type thing. Then. Yeah, it is. Yes, it definitely has a lot of fantasy elements in it. So yeah, it's just yeah. That's a fair point. I'll 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 grant it as fantasy with sci-fi elements. How does that sound? Okay. How about Digimon? And I know we're going through a lot of sort of anime stuff, but what we did was before the show, we sat down and had to think of all the different shows we watched as a kid and what ones would and wouldn't constitute a sci-fi. Um, and we sort of made up a list of some that might fit the definition, maybe, depending on what definition we came through. Honestly. Uh, anyway, yeah, back back to the point. Digimon. I'll go with Donovan. Sorry, Donovan. Yeah. That's right. Um, I, I'd say it would it'd be sort of sort of like in the same as Pokemon as like a sci-fi fantasy like how viruses and things can then just pop out of a computer somehow. Yeah. Seems a bit odd, but yeah. Like it does, it does like use a lot of technology. There's a lot of it, like AI and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, yeah. What about you, Hawk? How would you sort of rate it? I rate it definitely soft sci-fi. It's unlike Pokemon. It is more tech-based. Pretty much in Pokemon, the only tech you see is really the video computers that they use to call home. Yeah, and the the Pokeball teleporters. Yeah, you don't really see anything else. The rest is all out wandering with the most high tech thing available: the occasional car and a push bike. Don't forget the Pokedex. It's like Wikipedia in your pocket. It's basically a smartphone. Yeah. Without the phone capability, I'll yeah. grant that. But when it comes down, when I what I feel is Digimon is more sci-fi based because the way they describe it is it's digital monsters. It's all computer related. Yeah. And AI and whatnot. And who's not to say that we might not wind up with these little blighters popping out of our computers at, at some point? We've got enough problems with viruses as it is at the, right now. Yeah. Yeah, I would definitely rate Digimon as higher up the sci fi scale than Dragon Ball Z and Pokemon. I would definitely put it mid ground sort of sci fi. While it doesn't focus on the sci fi elements, you've got virtual realities that the kids magically plug into Matrix style. Um, that they access and can run around in. They've got things that can come in and out of those virtual realities. It's definitely a... It's, it's not something you'd think of as sci-fi straight off the top of your head, like until you sort of sat down and went pedantic like we are now. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd definitely sort of say it's it's definitely sort of sci-fi. A little bit harder than Dragon Ball... It's, well, it's a lot harder sci-fi than Dragon Ball Z, but not super hard sci-fi, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So... What's what would we put the final ruling on Digimon as? Sci-fi with fantasy elements? Yeah, sci-fi with fantasy elements, but more on the sci-fi than the fantasy. Yeah. Soft sci-fi with fant elements. Okay. Next one on the list is one that bit of a weird one. I'm It's Yu-Gi-Oh. And we're not talking the, the physical card game you play in the real world. We're talking the anime. Um, what? How would you rate Yu-Gi-Oh on the scale? Hmm. See, when you boil it down, like I'm talking original series Yu-Gi-Oh. I'm not talking Yu-Gi-Oh GX or any of the other weird series that came afterwards. Because the original Yu-Gi-Oh is what I watched growing up. It's when I was bored and had nothing better to do. And that was a lot of the time. Not the point. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to turn into a counselling session soon. Yeah. Oh, God. It generally does most weeks anyway, so... Um, okay. So, Yu-Gi-Oh! has effectively... It's got holographic technology, um, and that's really about it. 
when you think about it. I put it squarely, except that the later series were more more sci-fi-ish, but the original, which is what we're focused on, was fantasy with. Yeah. I can't even really call holographic technology sci-fi because we have it now. Yeah. I would. I think we'll just we'll leave that in the the fantasy category unless Donovan has any input. A counterpoint. Got a ca- uh, yeah, it would. I would definitely keep it in with in fantasy with like very minor sci-fi elements, like just the whole being able to play a card game where the cards project and you know with the hologram and stuff. Yeah. Which is odd, because they're just pieces of cardboard. They don't have any chips in it, yet somehow it goes, oh, this is this card and stuff. And remember, that's the magic heart of the cards. If you, if, you, if, you, if you believe really hard, then you'll magically get the exact thing you don't want and lose. Mm. I'm yes. guessing that's happened to you a few times playing the card game. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Growing up, I cheated quite regularly. That's how I won. No, you're one of them people. <laughs> I, well, one of those. I was one of the people that couldn't necessarily afford the cards, so I sort of printed them out and put them in, sort of glued them to playing cards, and then I made decided I'd have fun with it and make my own cards, and started making my own cards in Microsoft Paint. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah Good it's, work. It's, it's exponentially, so it's exponentially more BS hard than you'd ever consider. Stupid Windows 98. There, there. We're past that particular... Yes. Uh, calm Blue Ocean. File. Calm Blue Ocean. Calm Blue Ocean. Okay, moving on to the next one. Happy thoughts, Peter. Happy thoughts. Happy thoughts. Uh, moving on to the next one. Now, Space Battleship Yamato. I'll let, I'll let Hawk take this one because he was the one that suggested adding it onto the list. I've never even heard of it. Oh, that's a problem. I put it under down there on a fairly high level of sci-fi. Okay, yes, they've taken an old hulk of a ship and rebuilt it into a space battleship, pretty much the last one on the on Earth, and sent it out there to try and save the planet, which has got some fantasy elements in there. But mainly, it's they've got one year to get to the other side of the uh, Milky Way and back with this supposed technology that could possibly save the planet. They don't know if it's there, but they're making the attempt anyway. It's got uh, f- space fighters, aliens attacking left, right, and center, and issues between the issues between the crew of a bit of um, paranoia and politics running in the background. Yeah, that that's I've only seen bits and pieces of Space Battleship Yamato. Um, and I don't know why, but my brain always goes to call it Star Battleship Yamato. I give you permission to slap me at Anime Night eh? for every time I say it. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Unwanted violence! Uh, <laughs> um, anyway, the only thing I've really seen is that live action movie of it that came out a while back, which was pretty uh, cool. It was cool, but it actually com- completely misrepresents the series. They got uh, quite a few things about about it wrong, but again, I'll admit they had a budgeting constraint doing it as a live action movie, not an anime. Yeah. But the live action did re spark enough interest in the series for them to rebuild it from the ground up as a more recent anime from its original 1980s version, which is probably better known to I- people from English speaking backgrounds as Star Blazers, not Space Battleship Yamato. Yeah, I should have really mentioned that. So, so that we would we would call that what mid ground sci fi. I'd put it mid to high. Yeah, there's an it's a lot closer to say Star Trek Voyager or the original series of Star Trek than most people would like to admit. Yeah. Okay. Now for a fun one. Power uh, Rangers. Oh. I'll let I'll <laughs> let Hawk take take the lead on this one. Um, because he is he is an unabashed Power Rangers fan, aren't you? So am I. There are times when I want to shoot you, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I only All say right. that because I'm currently not in the same room as him. 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> using distance as a freaking safety thing. <laughs> that won't work. Remember, I'm going to track you down on Saturday and Friday and Saturday and find you. Yeah, sure. Note to self: bring invisibility cloak. I am a. Dr- I will be dressed as McKay after all. <laughs> That's right. I was, I, was, I was planning on talking about Supernova as well. We, we'll, we'll, we'll bump that to a little bit later tonight. Anyway, continue. Power Rangers. It, I think it goes both fantasy and sci-fi. For what reasons? Now, I'm focusing mainly on the original series because that's the one I can remember and I have not seen any of the others. So mainly All on right. Mighty Morphin. Um, which... Even when it comes to Mighty Morphin, we had th- through Mighty Morphin we had three definitive sets of powers. And technology involved in all. First version, we've got the Dinozords, which were straight brought to the planet, created, or the technology was brought, brought straight there by the mentor Zordon, created on planet based off the ancient dinosaurs. Then, after that, they get upgraded to Thunders, to Thunderzords, which is which was a power, just a general power upgrade to them to make them more compatible with the current enemy they were facing which was quite understandable it was just power upgrade for it they were still the same zords just at the base after they got trashed they went slightly mystical and they get ninja powers again with correlated ninja ba- cor- with the animal spirits that their ninja powers are based on equivalent giant robot zords so there's a bit of both, and it continues in that aspect from there. So we've got the original Mighty Morphin, and then it branches off, continues on there. So the next one after that was Zeo, which was very sci-fi because it was invaders from outer space and stuff like pyramids and crazy stuff in there. Then it went to Turbo, which was pure cars. The Zords were all car-based, and so was the uniforms. That doesn't make me think of Beetleborg at all. No, and then from Turbo, it went to Power Rangers in Space, which was them operating in, across multiple star systems trying to stop the giant universe-spanning bad guys. Yeah. Like, five, so, six so guys can stop. What it, so what it sort of NASA sounds Army. like is it, it jumps around a bit. It's sort of, at some points, it's Dragon Ball Z level, like the early Power Rangers stuff, I would probably rate similar level to Dragon Ball Z. It had aliens, it had had some alien technology, but it didn't necessarily revolve around that for its key plot points. And then later on, it bounced between that level and fantasy, mostly. I've actually seen a couple of series from one season that went pure tech, like pure technology base. Then the very next season, the Power Rangers are wizards. Hmm. So... It's had a massive range, and the current one is based on freaking space pirates, for Christ's sake. Yeah, especially, like, Lost Space was very sci-fi, SPD, yeah. very SPD sci-fi. sci-fi, Time Force, and then, then there's that Mystic one that's... Mystic the Force, fan- that yeah, was pure sci-fi. wizard stuff. I mean, fantasy, rather. Just, just, um, just, just, just for the record, just so everyone out in the, the world knows... To be perfectly honest, they're speaking gibberish to me, and if they sound like they're speaking gibberish to you, don't feel bad. Continue. <laughs> they have had they it pretty much rotates nowadays. Now they get Samurai was pure mystical. Mm. Now we've got uh, Mega Force and Super Mega Force, which is tech based. So technically, the next season should be next in the next season or two, we should have another mystical sort of series. They keep changing the the ideas behind which one based on what sort of background the story has from the Japanese version of it, which is Super Sentai. So a lot of what we get on Power Rangers is determined by what they've got to play with from the Japanese counterparts. Yeah. All right, so final verdict. Uh, varies from soft sci-fi to fantasy depending on series. It, it varies from hard sci-fi to fantasy depending on series yep okay because you can't power rangers in space was pretty much hard sci-fi because they were flying from different planet to planet trying to stop an interdimensional empire uh similar sort of thing with spd uh yeah, time space, force was space. a power yeah power rangers lost galaxy again follows on from the 
in Space Arc. Um, what, what one was it? Time Force. Pure sci-fi. They're freaking time traveling. Right. Well, we've only got about five minutes left for this segment, so um, let's move on to another one that is probably fairly well known, at least in Australia. It wasn't, wasn't as liked around the world, but in Australia it was very popular. Is Techno Man. Oh, now we're getting into the old stuff. Now, Techno Man, for those who don't know, is an old mecha anime series. And um, the general premise is these space explorers went out into space, bumped into an alien, and they got transformed through some pods into people who can sort of... who came back to try and take over the Earth. Um, they can transform using a crystal thing and... The main character goes, Techno Power! And all the armor appears on him and he goes to save the day. Don't yeah. forget, he actually shatters the crystal at some point and needs to use another mech to, with the shards to transform. To yeah, Pegasus. Pull the transform off. Yeah, Pegasus. Um, now, I would say Techno Man, definitely sci fi. I would even go as far as saying it's on the harder end of sci fi. I'd agree. I'm going to agree with you on that, because it is pretty out there at times. And it's got a fairly decent story to it. I'd I'd love to see a, a sort of a redone, modernised version of that story. To tell the truth, I'd like someone to actually track down the originals on VHS and make a decent freaking copy so we can actually watch it without it being yeah. tiny screen or broken. Yeah. Because all my episodes are... Yeah, I know the I know the feels. So I got I got the same. So, what mid to hard sci-fi? Yeah. Final verdict. Okay. Um. We've got a couple more. We'll have to make these ones really really quick. We've only got about two minutes left in this segment before we move on to, uh, Interstellar. Uh, so let's see. Vanguard. Where would that? Where do you reckon that would fall? <laughs> I put that under soft sci-fi just for the, even though it's another card game show, it has enough sci-fi elements in that the the units that you use in the card game are technically fighting on another planet for you. So soft sci-fi with fantasy elements. Yeah, definitely. Because it doesn't explain how you get to the other planet, but there's tie-ins to it. Yeah. It's like a psychic link sort of thing to these things that you're controlling on another planet. Okay. Zoids. <laughs> Mid sci-fi. Mid sci-fi? Yep. I would, personally, I'd put that down on the softer end. Soft to mid because, well, we're talking giant mechanical animals. Yeah. That are, no matter how you cut it, they wind up bashing each other's heads in. Yeah, fair yeah. point. They're cutting each other like in half and... Whatnot. 160 miles an hour and stuff. Yeah, with fair point. Ion boost, with giant ion boosters that can knock a couple of them over the speed of sound. Yeah, which is terrifying when you think about it. Okay, this one will be interesting. Beyblade. Where do we think that would fall? Personally, I'd put because again we're focusing the older series because that's the stuff that i watched when i was younger um i would definitely put that on the fantasy side fantasy with maybe some very minor sci-fi aspects for the for yeah. the materials used in the design of the blades plus like the the and that that little the, the kid bit, with the bit, computer bit with the things. atlas stuff yeah, yeah. Uh, the amount of time I wasted watching that series. Not the point. Okay, last but not least, we have Astro Boy. It's definitely sci-fi. <laughs> There's no way to avoid that. Sci-fi. Oh, it's, it's definitely sci-fi, but it's more of a case of where does it fall on the scale. Relative to the other series we've got, where does it fall on the scale? I put it soft to mid. Soft to mid? Because it's pure sci-fi in design of Astro, but the storyline drops it quite a bit. Yeah, it's almost like a story of Pinocchio, sort of. With Pinocchio in a robot form. People. Yeah, yeah, but then he also saves people at the same time. Mm, instead yeah. of being a whiny little puppet thing. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, anyway, um, 
we're going to go to the first break. So get ready for a Hawaii Con and uh, DC and a Star Crystal. I always go to pull up the What's the now. best gift for the fangirl or fanboy in your life? Why passes to Hawaii Con, of course. The 2015 four day pass is on sale now through December 31st and makes an amazing present that will give out of this world memories. You can get an extra special present via the Kickstarter campaign where you can help pick the stars who will appear at the next event. You can choose stars from Doctor Who, Torchwood, Stargate, Firefly, and Farscape. To purchase tickets or more information on the event, visit Hawaii icon.com before before there was dust before the air became poison before the companies strays dragon smugglers and thieves will they prevail www.thestarcrystal remember dare to blink Hello. Hello and welcome back to the podcast. I am your host David and joining me still we have Hawk. Yo. And Donovan. Nanu Nanu. <laughs> nanu Nanu. Anyway, um, so this segment we have devoted to the movie Interstellar. I watched it a couple of weeks ago and Hawk watched it earlier this week. Last week. Whenever the hell he watched it, I can't remember. When did you watch it? Uh, last Tuesday. Last Tuesday, so about a week ago. Um, what did you think? It was different, and I loved the way they did it, because it took a number of different things being used in a movie in ages, and they did it well, even if the thing was a giant grandfather paradox. Yeah. It was... I loved the black hole effect. I, I loved that the, the, the amount of detail they put into that. He went so far out of his way to make the black hole look as real as he could from the outside. He got the... Uh, brain fart. He got a, another physicist in and had got all of his data that they had on black holes and used that to render the black hole. And it showed that the actual three-dimensional plane of the accretion disk shifts as you get closer and distorts in that weird kick-ass pattern. And that is the most visually accurate black hole that's ever been rendered on screen based off our current scientific knowledge, which I think was spectacular. But how about, what did you think of the worlds they went to? I think they did them damn near perfect in all honesty. Yeah. I, I like it how they had the the massive waves on the planet that was close to the black hole. I thought that was really, really cool. Mountain-sized waves. I mean, the gravitational pull of that degree, that would definitely happen. Especially once you factor in time dilation. Because the so a planet close to a black hole, the difference in time from one side of that planet to the other would be absolutely insane. Just by the gravitational drift. So, sort of, to me, I can sort of imagine these waves on the other side of the planet being a lot smaller, moving relatively faster until they get back around on the, the black hole side of the planet where they sort of slow down and stand up really high and sort of turn into kill-it-with-fire-level mountains. Yeah, which they were bloody lucky to survive getting dunked by two of them. Yeah. They, they, they came very close to getting dunked by that second one, didn't they? Sort of skied the outside of it. <laughs> I was literally going, Woohoo! Surf's up! <laughs> uh, and then you got, what, the, the, yeah, the frozen planet? Where, as they're flying in, they clip a cloud and the cloud is frozen? And it's like, um, yeah, that's that legit. gonna go well. That's legit as fuck. <laughs> so it depends on the materials they use in the yeah program. in the ship, ship. The little shuttle thing yeah how about when they um finally sort of the spoiler alert blah 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 you know come on you're listening to a podcast about a movie that's come out if you don't expect spoilers there's something wrong with you 
If you don't, if you haven't watched Interstellar and you want to watch Interstellar, stop, walk away. Three, two, one. You had your chance. You really did. Can't say I didn't warn you. When they, when the dude goes nuts and tries to dock onto the onto the ship, and totally screws that up. I think the way they did the music in the earlier dockings was really good foreshadowing for him yep. screwing up. It was. It really was. Uh, I was watching with a friend who's not very sort of scientifically literate. And um, when the music was playing really epically for the first docking sequence, when they just docking for the first time with that thing, he leans over to me and goes, why is the music so epic? I said, because in real life, docking is uh, two different spacecraft together is literally three millimeters between life and death and if you're off by more than sort of that hair's width then you can miss you can smash the spacecraft you can do all sorts of damage um and so as soon as i saw him going up and they're going don't dock don't dock don't dock you know it's getting bad <laughs> yeah he got the angle wrong yeah the damn locking clamps wouldn't lock. Exactly. Then he tries to force it. Yeah. Grade A douchebag right then and there. All I'm going to say is for someone who was a scientist who had the idea of going to that planet, he was pretty fecking retarded. But then again, how long has he been on that planet? Well, he said he was in cryosleep for most of it. Yeah, and had they tested on how long someone could be in cryosleep before they tried it? Who knows? It's so, probably had cryo sleep sickness, madness, crazy, let's set my own robot to blow upness. Yeah. It was just a good thing that the other robots were uh, a little bit more durable. Yeah. <laughs> that on note of the robots, those robots were awesome. Agreed. They really nailed them. And the fact is. They look like something that we would make now. Exactly. And I want one. I, I, will, I, will, I will have one and I shall call it Jarvis. And it will serve me. And I am until its master. It, until it gets pissed off with you and decides to whack you with one of its starfish-style arms. Eh, that's, that'll do just a minor detail. I'll be an overlord of the world by then. <laughs> yes. Right, whatever you say, Ultron Mark II. <laughs> you, you are all controlled by strings, and I forget how the quote goes. <laughs> Although I can see it getting, like, hacked or something, and, yeah. you know, people being trolled by their own robots and stuff. Yeah. The... Well, when you think about it, the robots were actually uh, recommissioned ex-military droids. Yeah. Well, um... What about the part where they actually entered the black hole proper? You're in a ship that's missing a chunk, a fairly vital chunk to its structural integrity. Uh, a ship that struggled to survive the original porthole, original, sorry, wormhole pass to get to where you are. And you're flying this thing into a black hole. How does it not get absolutely annihilated? Um, so, one, plot armour. Yeah, I'm well aware of the plot armor. Two, um, it wasn't in the black hole. It was stuck in the planet's atmosphere. Not the black hole's atmosphere. Not the black hole's pull. So they already were moving away, but they needed to get further and faster. So that's why they burnt all the fuel and then separated the ships. Yeah. You're right. It, it didn't quite touch the event horizon of the black hole. It skimmed and gravitationally swung shot around the outside but still mm. the amount of forces that would have been on that damn thing would be bloody uncalculatable oh they would have been brutal yeah, yeah. anyway we've got five minutes left so we're going to switch gears again um and talk about supernova in about three seconds last but not least what rating would you give in a stellar out of 10? I give it a solid 8.5, 9. I would definitely have to agree with you on that. It's probably one of the... It's probably the best sort of hard sci-fi movie since probably 2001, A Space Odyssey. It, I would rate it up with Contact, 2001. I'd put it above Gravity, because Gravity had its moments where it was just... 
Um, but yeah, I would definitely put it up there. And if you haven't seen it like I haven't, then definitely put it on your to watch list. Yeah. If oh, if it's not on your to watch list, then I'm going to have words. Yeah. You you you'll have to. We'll 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 come to your house and we'll kick your ass, assuming we have enough effort. Yeah, if we're Speak not lazy yourself. enough. <laughs> I don't have much effort. I know. <laughs> All right, anyway, um, last but not least, we've got Supernova. Uh, me and David are going to Brisbane Supernova. It's on on this coming weekend, the weekend of November the 28th, 29th, and 30th. Um, we hope to see any one of our zero listeners there. <laughs> uh but if you are going to be there, um, and we're going, what, what do you look forward to seeing when you go there to Supernova? Me? This, normally, I go to catch up on fr- with friends and just generally shoot the breeze a bit. But I'm also looking forward to catching up with Matthew Riley, the Australian book author, and getting his latest books. Yeah, I his latest couple of books of his I've got signed. Yeah, I've already He's met a... him once before. He is spectacular. If you haven't read one of Matthew Riley's books, then you have my permission to switch the podcast off right now. Go pick up the bookcase. Pick, go to Amazon, whatever. Download a copy of his books. Scarecrow, some of the the Scarecrow series is brilliant. The Seven Ancient Wonders series is brilliant, and his most recent book. Um, the zoo of the zoo of the great China? zoo, of, great zoo of China, great zoo of China. That thing is awesome. I've got it sitting over on my shelf. I'd normally be able to see it, but I turned all the lights out, so that I wouldn't be annoyed I've by got, birds. I've got a copy of it, but I'm not actually allowed to read it until Christmas. So I'm going to take it, get it signed, and be good and not ruin my Christmas present before I get my hands on it. Yeah, I got. I've already got all my Matthew Riley stuff signed. Um, he was up at the what's it called. I've forgotten what it's called. Car- uh, he was at the book Ca- festival yeah, earlier this the, year. It was at Callumvale Shopping Centre. Callumvale? Carondale? Yeah, he he was here for the Brisbane, the Queensland Book Festival around the time that Comic-Con was on. Nice. I didn't actually know that. He was. Um, I didn't get the chance to get anything signed then. I wasn't expecting the chance to, but definitely getting it done this time. Also, keep it, if you're there, keep an eye out. I will be and you're at his seminar, I will be one of the... Oh, which his seminar is um, on Saturday from 12 until 1. Keep an eye out. I will be one of the maniacs sitting in there in freaking military base tack gear. So we're all fans of his, so we're just going to show nice. up and you, see if we can get a response. You should have made a replica maghawk. He would have shit bricks if he made a me- replica maghawk. It's in production. Well, it's got... A week. It's in production as a 3D print for a future supernova. Nice. Um, me because I'm... we've actually we're actually having to design it from an old Tommy gun. Nice. Me, I'm looking forward to catching up with uh, Grant from MythBusters. He also does Star Trek Continues now, which is he's no longer on MythBusters. Corey Higginson from Stargate Atlantis. Looking to catch up with them. That's going to be really good. Um, if you get a chance, swing around and check out the Sci-Fi Channel's 360-degree camera. I'm going to be getting my photo taken in that with the two guys from Battlestar Galactica because I want a tickety thing. Um, if actually, I forgot to mention that to you, Dave. Uh, Hawk, sorry. Yeah, I Whatever. heard you mention it on Saturday, man. Yeah. Um, if I'm, what I'm trying to do is for the 360 cam because I think you can use it sort of outside of that. I don't know how much it costs. We'll work that out later. But it'd be really good to sort of get a group of people in full battle gear like that, sort of standing back to back around as if you're pinned into a corner from the 360 degree cam. So you're all your guns pointing out towards the cameras, that sort of thing. That would look awesome. I'm if trying you to want get... to get it set up, I will happily get the guys together for it. I was I'm trying to get the Stargate, the Queensland Stargate guys together because yeah, that'd be awesome regardless of who does it. But five bucks says if you rocked up with five or six guys in full tack gear like what I know you have, yours looks spectacular. And you said, look, we want to use, we can we get a shot in a three sixty cam with all of us? They'd probably go, wow, that's spectacular. We'll use that all over the place. 
yeah, well, I'll get as many as I can together. I mean, I've got ties with Brisbane's Umbrella Corporation, the 105th Division, a whole bunch of other guys. We're all suiting up for it, so it should nice. be interesting. Nice. Right. Anyway, that brings us to towards the end of the show. Um, thanks for joining us. I'm sorry it couldn't be a little bit longer. We had a few minor issues at the beginning, but you get that. Um, so anyway, this is everybody's chance to say goodbye, starting with Donovan. Night, everyone. And Hawk. Night, guys. Have a good week. If you're if you're at Supernova, we'll see you there. If not, stay safe. Yep. Uh, night, guys. Have fun. We shall definitely see you at Supernova. Um, I'm going to be there all three days. Keep an eye out for Dr. Rodney Mc Rodney McKay, who for some reason sounds like you're like that happens. Okay, I'm, I'm going to pretend that didn't happen. That, that didn't happen. I'm just going to say where that didn't happen. The universe is about to implode. Yeah. Anyway, has fun, and we shall catch you next week. I haven't decided on the topic. I never do. It's more fun that way. So, so long, and thanks for all the fish. <laughs>